Here we go. My top 10 most disappointing movies of 2021. What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be going through my top 10 most disappointing films of 2021. We got a lot of movies in 2021 because all the movies that got delayed during the pandemic came out in the same year. Now I'm not saying that these films are bad necessarily. I mean some of them are. But I think some of you will be surprised at some of the movies on here that I chose. This is my list. You might not agree with it and that is totally okay. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinions. Now I do plan on doing my top 25 films of 2021 that's going to be a more positive video but today we're going to be focusing on 10 movies that I went into with certain expectations and in one way or another those expectations were not met. Let's get started. Number 10 we've got Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Now I know some people might say that they weren't expecting this movie to be good at all but the trailers showed me that they were trying to go in a more faithful direction to the video games and so the first half of this movie is okay it's not it's not good but I wouldn't say it's terrible and I would was actually having fun with it but then the second half just really goes off the rails we get some bad cgi and it just feels like they gave up but i do think they're headed in the right direction and i'm curious to see what happens if we get another one number nine now this one is probably going to surprise some people but house of gucci was just not what i expected now the first half of this movie is great like i thoroughly enjoyed the first half but the second half of this film is so slow that it ruined the entire film for me i honestly just expected more from ridley scott i I just left this film not caring at all to ever watch this film again. And I don't understand why Ridley Scott decided this story needed to be told. And don't get me wrong, it's a very, very well made film. I just think it could have been a lot shorter and they could have made me care more about that second half. Number eight, another one that's gonna surprise some people, Last Night in Soho. Now, I love Edgar Wright films. Baby Driver's great, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz. He's a great director and I love his editing style. But Last Night in Soho is one of those movies that I think takes itself too seriously. Again, the first half really good but the second half right away told me that this movie was going a different route than I expected and not in a good way. I felt like it just turned into a very formulaic cliche type of ending and it honestly just left me very disappointed. Number seven now this one I feel like most people are going to be on the fence about Malignant. I feel like half of the audience for this movie loves it the other half is not on board with the idea that it's kind of making fun of itself I guess. I started out thinking that it was going to be a really cool creepy movie and instead it just goes this campy, cheesy, cliche route on purpose, I think. That's cool and everything, but I feel like it was advertised like it was a more serious film. And I love James Wan. The Conjuring, Insidious, the first Aquaman was really good. I'm excited for the new one. And I think the first Saw is a perfect example of a good filmmaker showing that you don't need a huge, crazy budget to make a good film. If I had known that the vibe was going to be so drastically different than what the trailer showed, I think I would have enjoyed it more. Number six, Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I knew what I was in for when I watched this film, but I was just kind of let down at how crappy the side plot was. I didn't care about Millie Bobby Brown and all the other stuff they were doing with this, like, secret world. I just wanted to see Godzilla and Kong fight, and instead they just made it this long, drawn-out thing that I just found myself wanting to fast-forward through and get to the good parts. And I really, really enjoyed Godzilla. I thought Kong Skull Island was a very fun movie, but Godzilla King of the Monsters? <sighs> and I just felt like it was more like Godzilla King of the Monsters than it was the first Godzilla or Kong Skull Island. So that's why it's on this list. Number five, Space Jam 2. Now, I went and watched the first Space Jam before I watched this one, and all in all, it's just not that great of a movie to begin with. It's more of a nostalgia trip. And I mean, I expected them to be using the other Warner Brothers properties and stuff like that, but I didn't think it was going to be like an hour and a half advertisement. I really, really really did not care about this film. I don't know basketball. I don't remember the name of the basketball player who's the, the lead in this film. And I didn't care to look it up because that's how much I didn't like this movie. But Space Jam 1 was a lot of fun. But I felt like this one was just a little too on the nose and it was just using all the Warner Brothers properties to kind of like shove the advertising down your throat. And I found myself dozing off halfway through this movie. So I guess I just went into it with expectations that I was going to have more fun with it. And I really, really hope they don't try to make a Space Jam 3. Number four, this one kind of hurt. Spiral. Again, I'm a big fan of the Saw franchise. There's some really bad Saw movies in there, but with Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson in this one, I thought maybe we were going to get something special. And the first 45 minutes of this movie was exactly what I wanted. I was in 
enjoying the film. I liked where they were going with it. I dug the vibe. I liked the little banter between Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson because Samuel Jackson is supposed to be his dad. But 45 minutes in, it's just like they fired the writer or somebody else had to finish it or something like that because there's a little time jump and then the movie just completely turns into a train wreck. And the ending for this film has got to be one of the worst Saw endings I've ever seen. And I've seen them all. Even some of those low, low budget ones where I don't recognize any of the actors have a better ending than this one. You don't need to watch this movie, so I'm going to just go ahead and spoil it. But the end of this film has our killer getting away while there's literally a SWAT team like 20 feet away. And we're supposed to believe that they don't notice this guy just escaping through the elevator. It's just, it's an insult to the audience to believe that that's how it ends. And I mean, the whole building's supposed to be surrounded. And you're telling me he's just going to take an elevator and just bounce. I mean, you could see how upset I am about it. I really, really hoped that this movie was going to be better than it was. And those first 45 minutes really debated me. And again, I love the Saw movies, but I wouldn't be upset if they just stopped. Make something good or leave it alone. Number three. God, this one really, really just pissed me off. Without remorse. When you get somebody like Michael B. Jordan as the main star of your film, you at least hope that he would like, I don't know, give a damn about the script. Because the script for this film is atrocious. I swear, whoever the gun expert was on this film, it's like they were just there to get a paycheck. They didn't actually do their job. There is a scene in this movie where there is somebody with a sniper rifle shooting at our, you know, beloved team of badasses, including Michael B. Jordan. And this sniper is at a distance that you would expect somebody with a sniper rifle to be at. But our characters are literally trying to shoot this sniper with these little submachine guns. And if you've played any Call of Duty, you know that a submachine gun is not meant to be shot at a distance like that. It would be very, very difficult to hit your target at that distance with a submachine gun or a pistol. But at that point, it just took me so far out of the movie that I just didn't even care about what I was watching anymore. And honestly, I could say out of all the movies I watched in 2021, this is the one that that if I could go back and not watch it, I wouldn't. And I thought it was hilarious because there was people on TikTok who were arguing with me saying that it was good. I just didn't understand it. Understand what? It's your typical cliche, badass gets his wife killed so he goes after those people, set up type of movie. Oh, but at the end, they tease a Rainbow Six film. I really hope that that film doesn't happen because the people who made this film seem like they either weren't trying or they just didn't know what they were doing. Number two, The Matrix Resurrections. I went into this knowing that we've only really gotten one solid Matrix movie, The Matrix, the first one. I mean, The Matrix Reloaded is okay. After that, I don't really even remember the other two. I know one of them's like animated, I think. But the trailer for this one seemed like they were going back to the roots. I mean, they kind of did while blatantly copying the plot of the first one and literally showing footage from the first one in it to just be like, hey, this is what we're doing. Like, I don't know if Lawrence Fishburne was just like, nope, I ain't doing it. But they recast Morpheus. And then for some reason, we have this Kung Fu master Keanu Reeves not doing any kung fu in this film. The action in this movie is so boring that halfway through, I just checked out, man. I was just kind of half watching it, half going through TikTok comments. And I watched it around Christmas with my family. And I mean, my whole family was just sitting there just like, yep, it's a it's a Matrix movie. But I just had higher expectations for this because of the trailer. And I understand that you can make a good trailer for a shitty movie, but man, was this one disappointing. And now we have arrived at my number one most disappointing film of 2021. But before I reveal that, guys, if you like these videos, if you want to see more of them, the best way to support this content is by using G Field code Danny D. That'll save you 10 or 30% off your order at gfield.com. Using that code saves you some money and supports my content. So it's a win win. And if you're not sure what flavor to start with, I highly recommend a starter kit or go check out my G Field reviews on this YouTube channel, and that should steer you in the right direction. But without further ado, my number one most disappointing film of 2021 is Halloween Kills. I really, really enjoyed the Halloween that we got back in. 2018, I think it was. This whole pandemic is just a blur. But I had fun with that movie. I felt like the movie knew what it was. I love Danny McBride and David Gordon Green, the people behind the film. But this movie honestly just feels like it shouldn't exist. I think they had enough plot and story to do two films, but you know how it is. The studio wanted three. And so we've got Halloween Kills in the middle and it's just like the turd in the turd sandwich. Now, this movie started out kind of promising. I liked the whole flashback thing of the cop back in the 70s when the original killings were happening. Like, 
Like, I thought that was a cool idea. It was fun. But when you find out what happens with that subplot, it just kind of ruined it for me. Like, they could have executed that better with the whole accidentally killing the partner thing. And then halfway through this movie, it turns into the whole mob mentality thing. Like, things go wrong when a mob gets together and they might kill the wrong person, you know, with the, the whole hospital scene. I mean, we've got Laurie Strode literally having just gotten stabbed and all that stuff in the last one. Just walking around the hospital, you know, I mean, she's in pain, but I guarantee you, in real life, she wouldn't be getting out of that hospital bed. She'd be in way too much pain. And then the ending of this movie. Like, I do not care if they were just trying to rack up kills. They could have done it better. And I hate when people say, oh, well, it's just a horror slasher, dude. What do you expect? Some Oscar-winning film? No! But I expect them to spend a little more time and put a little more effort into a more believable story as opposed to people just grouping up on Michael Myers and then one by one just letting him slaughter them in the street. Honestly, it just felt like an insult to the Halloween fans. It's got some good kills, but like I said, I don't think this movie should exist. And I'm gonna go see Halloween Ends at the theater, but this one definitely lowered my expectations for that one. And I heard they're doing some kind of time jump, and it's gonna have something to do with the actual pandemic and stuff in that one. And it's just like, I go to the movies to escape from that stuff. Please don't put it in the plot. But we'll see. I mean, the bar is pretty low after this one, so I think Halloween Ends will be a better movie. I wouldn't be surprised if the first Halloween in this trilogy is the best one but damn was i disappointed by this movie anyways guys that is my top 10 most disappointing films of 2021 again that's my opinion i would love to hear what you guys think though let me know which movie was the most disappointing for you in 2021 what do you think about my list and again i've got a list here i am going to be doing a top 25 movies of 2021 that one's going to be a lot more fun to talk about i think because those are movies that i actually enjoyed and was happy with so definitely stay tuned for that one and if you guys made it this far in the video comment ksi when i go through the comments comments and I see that you commented KSI, I know that you watched the whole video and you're a real one. But that's it for today, guys. As always, stay safe, be nice to each other out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!